size booming economy in the United States of America is an internally displaced people's crisis. I beg your pardon, homeless people living in tents. In 2018, more than half a million people experienced homelessness across the United States. New York City accounted for more than 14% of this number. The homeless crisis is also visible on the streets of Los Angeles with makeshift, I mean tents, shelters, for the city's homeless becoming permanent fixture of the city's landscape. In many countries in Africa, we call it an internally displaced people's crisis, evidenced by the tents, like what you find in New York and Los Angeles. Internally displaced people are persons or groups of persons who have been forced or obliged to flee or to leave their homes or places of habitual residence due to conflict situations of generalized violence, violation of human rights, or natural or human-made disasters. And these are people who have not crossed internationally recognized state borders. This is the same to me for the homeless people I saw in New York on my visit in July this year. Humanitarian needs arising from economic exclusion, which is the major root cause of homelessness in the United States, is a human-made disaster. If those images were played out in an African country, we would have convened in a city in Europe to declare humanitarian emergency and call for humanitarian action. We would do this because of the protracted nature of the displacement, which we would take as an indication of a government unwilling or unable to address its country's humanitarian needs. The homelessness crisis has been in evidence for close to a decade. It is a protracted crisis. So why are we not declaring a humanitarian emergency are calling for international humanitarian assistance supported by condemnation, governments and state authorities? The U.S. president's approach is a crackdown on homelessness. And if it had happened in an African country, this would be interpreted as a government enforcing a forced return. And this would be interpreted as an indication of a dictator who does not care for his people. The international humanitarian community would demand for an intention survey for the IDPs to indicate where they want to go and what they want as a solution to their situation. But you can only do that if an internally displaced people's issue is in your country, right? Then we could, you know, the IDPs are displaced due to no fault of their own, but due to a failure in governance. But when they are named homeless, the response is different. It is the fault of their own, and they are violating city rights by putting their tents in the city. What really is in a name? Everything I say. So why this double standard in naming crisis? Because the naming of crisis and solutions in Africa is indicative of the way the continent has been viewed and treated for centuries. The Western obsession with naming African leaders and leadership negatively has increasingly become a case of giving a dog a bad name to justify hanging it. Many African leaders look away from the way conflict and disasters in their countries are presented because such reports are often prefixed by the call for funding. But charity appeals announcement to the world of the weakness of a government. The bigger the amount of funds required, the more government appears weaker. The more recurring and repeated the appeals are, the weaker the national systems are perceived to be. Bottom line, African countries and its citizens must be less receptive of the injustices in the naming and categorization of their events and challenges. Because misnaming is more than mere words. Misnaming creates wrong responses or assistance, ultimately stalling development and growth in the continent. Thank you for watching. Please, please don't forget to like and subscribe.